Hey everyone, welcome to the very first episode of the AI Driven Enterprise Podcast. I'm super excited to be your host for this new podcast series coming from Abby. Now in this podcast, we'll be covering a wide range of topics, all of them related to artificial intelligence and intelligent automation. We'll be bringing on industry leaders in their specific fields to come on to the show and actually have a chat about what they're seeing in the market. Really to pick their brains about how this is influencing their decision-making for the future and what is the next big thing that we should all take into account. And hopefully you'll hear it here first. Of course, the main thing for this series is to share the knowledge that everybody has and be able to create a platform that we can all share that knowledge with each other. As I said, I'll be your host for this series. So let me quickly introduce myself. The name is Max and I'm the Senior Director for AI Strategy here at Audi. As you might've guessed, technology is a big passion of mine. From a very young age, I very much enjoyed seeing all the inner workings of computer and electronic devices. So that is why I'm really happy to be able to share my latest insights into the technology market with you in this monthly podcast. Now for this first series, we already have an amazing lineup of thought leaders that will be appearing as guests on this podcast. Already next month, we will be taking the ethical and legal implications of artificial intelligence, specifically generative AI on the Deluxe with AI ethics evangelist, Andrew Perry. We will also have Bruce Orkett. That'll be sharing his view of the current market and how it's dramatically changed in the last 12 months. But we're not just about ethics and market landscape here. So we'll also be having much more technically inclined episodes one of which our very own Andrew Zuzan, Vice President of Product Management, will be joining us to deep dive into the cutting edge AI together with me of Abby's product. But for this first episode, I want to zoom in on a particular topic of pipe that is still at the peak of the hype cycle, if you ask me. So let's talk about large language models. Are they really the future? That's a question I get asked a lot. And that's what I kind of want to pick everybody's brain on today. So let's start with some context. I don't know if you know, but data is absolutely everywhere these days. And we actually have a lot more of data than most people realize. So if you look at it recently, it was kind of noted that we have about 64 zettabytes of data. That's right, zettabytes. So if you put that into perspective, if one terabyte were the equivalent of one kilometer, a single zettabyte would actually allow you to embark on 1,300 round trips to the moon and back. That's a lot. And we're not just talking about one, 64 zettabytes, a huge amount. And that enormous amount of data is actually quite significant. So a very big portion of that is actually still not easily accessible and remains entirely unstructured. When we consider the pace at which technology has evolved in the last couple of years, it's not surprising. So if we take a walk through tech history lane, it's fascinating to see how far we've come. We started with the invention of the first electric battery in the 1800s, and it took just only another century for commercial lighting systems to become widespread. But remember back in 1995, when having a 16 megabytes of RAM in your computer felt as magical as the release of the first Harry Potter book? Well. Just six years later, we had thousands of songs in our pockets with the introduction of the Apple iPod. Along this journey, we witnessed rapid hardware advancements, such as the launch of AWS in 2006, which introduced the larger public to cloud computing. And that was also the advent of general purpose GPUs, which opened the doors for artificial intelligence and machine learning advancements that we're seeing today. Now, when we talk about the rapid advancements in artificial intelligence and by consequence of actually first machine learning, it's worth noting that these technologies are older than is commonly believed. Now, the first recurring neural network was actually published in 1925 and computer vision was invented in the 1970s, predating the World Wide Web. The very first transformer, which forms the basis for large language models, was created in 1992, even before the release of the Intel Pentium processor. And back in 2018, OpenAI released the very first large language model, GPT-1, Generative Pre-Trained Transformer Edition 1, 
which went relatively unnoticed. But within a short span of four years, its latest release, or actually the release from last year with GPT 3.5, ChatGPT as most people know it, has captured the attention and enthusiasm of absolutely everyone. The hype surrounding large language models is absolutely real. Now, the peak of inflated expectations has never been higher, in my opinion. I've seen a couple of these hype cycles happen before, and this one is really extraordinary. And the amazing thing is, in my opinion, the momentum continues to grow. What makes it even more extraordinary is that it isn't limited to the technology community. LLMs have gained widespread recognition and awareness. Everyone seems to have heard about what LLMs can do and what they're believed to be capable of, and even their perceived shortcomings. In fact, the European Union quickly passed new AI legislation, a remarkable feat considering the pace at which lawmakers usually operate. Perhaps they sought inspiration from sci-fi movies or ChatGPT to draft the laws. We'll be diving into that notion in great detail in the next episode of this podcast series. By now, most people are familiar with the concept of hallucinations associated with large language models. Numerous stories have been published, ranging from LLMs inventing scientific papers to creating entirely new laws to support legal cases. This has further fueled the public's excitement. And while I believe that once we achieve the right implementation of this technology, it will be bringing about significant changes. We need to ask ourselves, how can we get there? Well, first and foremost, we need accurate models. We've discussed the vast volume of data available today and why LLMs like ChatGPT have been trained on a significant amount of this. This abundance of data doesn't necessarily guarantee an understanding of the context in which the model is operating, e.g. your business. Now, the context comes from the data foundation within your organization. Many enterprises today are eager to reach the finish line, hoping that large language models can solve their problems by providing insights from their extensive but often disorganized and scattered data. However, to make an LLM understand the desired context, you need the right data foundation and knowledge base. This is where a technique like context injection, for example, comes into play. And this is just one example of the different ways that you can leverage this technology to your benefit without the side effects. Now to dive a little bit deeper into context injection, this involves automatically adding knowledge to the user prompt, the question that you're asking to the large language model, making the model content aware before it interacts with the LLM. This ensures that the model operates within the confines and context of your organization. Therefore, the importance of accurate models cannot be overstated. To achieve this, organizations must build their knowledge bases with accurate data before venturing into the realm of generative AI to have it available without encountering the potential pitfalls. Now, to accomplish this, especially when dealing with large volumes of data locked within documents, for example, intelligent document processing is absolutely crucial. By leveraging machine learning and AI techniques, specifically tailored as narrow AI, to extract meaning from documents, you can build the knowledge base necessary to embark on your journey of leveraging generative. This is, for example, precisely what Abby's technology does. They are sponsoring the whole series, so consider it as the obligatory word about our sponsors part dealt with. Now, don't get me wrong. I think it is a promising future in artificial intelligence that puts your information to work. Let me emphasize that what we are witnessing today will undoubtedly transform the way we work with technology and live our lives. Just as the internet revolutionized how we access information, purchase goods and services, consume media content, and as mobile devices brought technology to our fingertips and reshaped the way that we experience technology in itself, AI is now ushering in the next wave of change. AI provides us with a new interface that will kind of redefine how we work, live, and leverage technology. It's akin to the computer mouse taking us out of the era of green letters on black screens. I'm really excited to be able to witness this unfolding future and discover how we will interact with our devices and applications in the coming years. And that's exactly the kind of conversation that we're going to be having on this podcast series, where we'll uncover exactly where we're heading and try to peek into the future to see what's coming next. It's going to be a great 
ride for us to go embark on together. I'm really happy that we've been able to put this together and actually going to have this series happening. Now, with that, we conclude our very first episode. Again, it's going to be great to see all of the different speakers and guests join us on this podcast. So stay tuned, subscribe, and definitely look out for that next episode.